So in this video we're looking at Adobe Firefly. So this is in beta as it says, and soon these sorts of features will be coming to Photoshop and as it says at the bottom on the banner there, you can get it on the Photoshop beta app. So I thought I'd just have a go at the new features within Firefly, as it says, they'll come to Photoshop shortly. So we've got a number of different features. We've got text to image, um, and there's loads of sites out there that do text to image, but you, in essence, put in your description and it generates an image for you. Generative fill, which is removing objects or adding new ones in from a description and then text effects. And if we scroll a bit further, we've got regenerative color, 3D to image and extend image, which are gonna come as they go through the process of introducing them to their tools. So I thought we'd start with text to image. So we click generate. And what it does is it gives you lots of examples already uh, and it's got try the prompt. So you can see the sort of prompt, those familiar with AI, it's all dependent on the prompt that you use. So the, the better, more descriptive the prompt, the more accurate the image you're going to, to get. So let's see what we can do. So let's type in something here. Um, and click generate. So whilst we're waiting for it to generate, you've got various features here. So you've got aspect ratio. Um, I mean, I think that looks quite good. It's the sort of thing I was expecting and hoping for. Um, by putting in North Wales, it gives it that certain look to it. Um, the crumbling building and then the slate quarries behind um, of those. I mean that one I think looks just amazing and you can see you can obviously rate the result. It's all part of that learning. Uh, we can look through all of them but yeah I think considering that's totally generated by AI, that's quite amazing. Uh, someone who loves North Wales and goes up there a lot. Yeah that certainly captures the ethos of the sort of thing I was hoping it would create. And then You've got various filters at the moment that's described as art, but we could tick photo and then it will regenerate it. I kind of like the art look, it's sort of slightly illustrative. And we scroll down further, we've got different themes uh, and then we've got different tones. I mean, for me, that's even more stunning, isn't it? I mean, you just look at those and they just scream North Wales slate quarry. So yeah. And again, all completed or generated through AI. So quite an amazing tool. As I say, just scrolling down the outside edge there, you've got various uh, colors and tones you could add to it. So we could make it black and white, um, various lighting. And then click generate. And again, really effective results. So that's using that. As I say, we can just change the ratio as well. But very effective. And thinking about it on an educational perspective, I think it'd be quite nice to, to consider it as an ideas generator. I think with all AI stuff, it's a great way of, of looking at, one, developing your ability and students' ability to create prompts and writing a, a very specific prompt that captures the idea and then providing them with that idea of what it is that they're wanting to create. Um, but yeah, this would give me a, certainly some ideas of the type of image I'm hoping to, to, to photograph. It may be that you use this to generate an image for a brief. So anyway, that's the text image feature and I think that works really well. Love the simplicity of the different settings on the panel there and hopefully when that's in, introduced and added into its other Adobe tools, it will be just as, as easy and as intuitive to use. So let's just try one more feature. So let's go back uh, and let's try the generative fill. 
So with this one, I think lots of photographers have, have taken a picture and then hoped that they could have removed the item. Uh, and if they're familiar with Photoshop, they will have spent a fair bit of time using the clone stamp to try and get rid of objects and, and people that they don't want. So that's what this does. So we can insert an object or we can just remove an object. So if we remove, we can then select the object we want to remove. So I'm gonna get rid of this chap here. And the person who stood behind him as well. And then we click remove. Give it a few minutes to do its magic. And we can see it's got rid of him. It's struggling with that guy's face. I didn't realize there's a person behind him. So we'll get rid of the person behind him as well. So we'll keep that variant. And then we'll go to remove this person as well. obviously it works better on things such as walls. I did try another version where I'd got rid of people and it completely redesigned this car because I had no idea what the car looked like. But I think those sorts of things works really effectively um, and a, a, a real boon for the photographer. Just when you need to get rid of that element that you don't want, it's very easy to able to do that. So, and you can see the various different versions of the image there as well. So I'm gonna click keep to keep that image. And then you've got the options to, to download, to publish or to copy to clipboard. So you've got those options there and they're the same ones that are available with the text generated image. So we just go back once more and have a quick look at the text effects. So, as you can see, a bit of a gimmick, but you can put in the text. I'm gonna be very unoriginal and put my name in. And then click generate. And you can see there's a whole variety of different types of lighting, but yeah, it works quite well. And you can see there's sample prompts as well listed there. And again, same sort of thing. With this, you can choose a background color or not, and then you can download it as well. So there you have it. I think uh, exciting. I think for me, it's about ideas, discovery and, and application. Uh, you could say, some would say you can make original artwork by using AI to create it. But for me, I think I prefer it more about using it to generate ideas. So I hope you found the video useful. If you did, remember to subscribe to the channel and join me again soon for more EdTech videos. Thanks for watching.